Hi, it's Rachel. In this video, I'm going to talk about defeating fear and a fear of the darkness. I mentioned in my previous videos about how we're in this womb state and in the womb it's complete darkness. Okay, it's like we're all blind and the light, only light that we have is when we have a true faith, which is a faith in the true Heavenly Father and His love and His ways and that serves the light here, but it's not the light. Our faith is a reflection of the light, but it's not the light. So because of that and because we're in the dark, fears easily grow and spread and they're very contagious. Okay, but they're very, but they keep us in bondage and they don't need to be because they ultimately are based in the unreal. Okay, they're based in a lack which is ultimately lack comes from a lack of that being a lack of that divine love. That's why that divine love pushes out all fear because when you understand the love of God that he has for you, you don't have any fear. But to have that kind of understanding is a knowing. Okay, it's a very deep knowing. And most of us don't have that depth of knowing yet. But we have faith that is growing and it's changing and it's developing. But along that way, as our faith grows, we have to battle fears. Um, and actually, as our faith grows, that's why. Because we battled certain fears and we overcame them. And thus our fear grew. I mean, our faith grew. So faith is necessary only because of the darkness that we're in and that we're not yet having that oneness with our Heavenly Father and faith is what is needed to battle those fears. Okay, that's why it's so significant and so important that we develop it. So our greatest weapon against our greatest enemy, which is fear. And fear includes just everything of lack. Um, there are many fears. There can be phobias. It has many, many faces, okay? It has, you know, a fear of being rejected, a fear of not being significant or valued or worthy, a fear of um, not having a certain life that you want, um, fears in your marriage, with money, with your children, um, with your health. There are a multitude of fears, okay? And where fear can grab a hold of people. And when you look at different people, everybody has different fears. Some people have the same fears, but all the fears, they are a little bit different. That's because none of them are really real, okay? It's based on the lie of the lack, of the disconnect from the love of the Heavenly Father, which we feel in this darkness because there's this flesh veil that is between us, okay? That really is between us. And when we have not yet um, that deep knowing it's fear can easily grab a hold of us even as our faith is developing. So that's one thing. Don't get too frustrated when you kind of fall into that fear because you think, oh my, I, you, you know, because you can easily beat yourself up because you think your faith should be stronger. That's just part of your faith increasing, okay, is that you have to battle those fears. And that's one thing that is important too in defeating fear is not to run away from it, not sedate it, which so often we learn to do. But you have to face it head on. You have to go into that fear with God and let him reveal to you with his spirit that searches your soul and where is that fear coming from? What's that lie? And let him instill that truth that carries his love into that place. And once he does that, you will learn the truth, but then it'll be a process of him prompting you as those fears come up. Because fears can be such a habitual response in us because that's how we're used to thinking and operating. That's our perceptions that have been crafted in us, okay, from birth for some of us. So it's, he, that truth slowly over time dissolves those fears because it gives us a new perspective, new perception. Okay, so our perception again is very important in overcoming these. So while fear is our greatest enemy, Okay, and all the things that that represents. Because fear can come out as anger, aggression, depression. Um, it has many, many faces, but I'm just gonna use it as fear for simplicity's sake. So the greatest offensive weapon is that divine love of God. That's why it's so important to be spending that time developing 
that soul, that communion with him. Because although we're under this flesh veil, the spirit knows no bounds. So in the spirit, you can commune with the father outside of this womb. And that's how your faith grows. That's how you know the truth. Because it's a true communion and really do learn what is true. And that's what your faith is built upon. So your faith is built upon the truths of God and that communion and what you have learned of him. And when the faith is on that, it's on a solid rock in which you stand. So even when the fears come and they start blowing you and tossing you, and that's what it feels like in your spirit, you know, suffocating you, overcoming you. If you have that faith to go back to that's on the rock, it may feel like it's wavering, but it will stand. Okay, you'll come through that and you will stand. But again, you can't sedate your fear. That's what so many people do in so many different ways because it will always linger there. So you may get rid of it for the moment, but it will pop back up. You have to let, let that spirit dig deep to find the root and let it root it out and replace that divine love and truth. And that's the thing. You just can't say, well, you're not going to fear. You have to replace it with something. And that is an understanding of that love. And right now is an understanding of that love with a faith. Okay, because we're not yet in our Father's arms like we one day will be. Where faith will cease because we won't need it. We only need faith to battle the fears, to continue to grow, to believe in His love, to come out of this. So because it's so dark and there's so much blindness, that's why fears grow. That's why they're developed. That's why lies exist. Okay, because it's dark. So anybody can say, you know, anything and it's very easy for that to spread. Um, because no one can really see very clearly, all right? And especially because a lot of people don't have a faith developed in the true Heavenly Father on that divine love and on His divine truths. So fear gets contagious. You see someone over here that, you know, for whatever reason, you think that they might be right, and they're fearing in a certain area. It's very easy to take on those fears, okay? Because you think, well, oh, well, that might happen to me or whatever it is. So that's very important to see that it's very contagious like that. And that's, and fear is throughout the media, okay? Media is mostly actually about fear. That's why as you start in your soul development, you'll naturally start moving away from a lot of media resources because you just simply, it's because it hinders that soul development because it continues to feed fear when you're wanting to move away from that because it's not real. So fear, which actually is um, a part of death, because death isn't just a physical death. Death truly is the perception of the separation from the love of God. The love of God is always there, but it's the perception, which is easy to have in the dark womb because you've never met your father face to face. So it's this battle against fear is also the, the battle between death and life, okay? Death is that lack. It is that lack of that love. It's a lack of that connection in your perception where love is that connection that you have, okay? Fear is that comes from that same thing where love comes from life, that connection to him, okay? The unreal is this fear because the reality is that the Father's love is all consuming and all around you. He loves you more than anyone you can ever imagine. Okay, but those fears keep us blinded. So let me just share with you a brief example. When my cats hear a sound outside, okay, and it's unfamiliar to them, unexpected, okay, they were expecting a total peaceful day, something really startles them. They can get sometimes so fearful that, you know, they'll run and hide and they won't even let me comfort them. Okay. They just want to go run and hide in some place. And I can see that fear in them. And even, you know, I'm here and I'm wanting to comfort them and they're in this comfortable place and they really have nothing to fear, but that is their perception. Okay. They're perceiving of something that might happen, but it has nothing to do with the reality. That is a perfect picture of fear and how it is with our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father is there for us, but we get wrapped up in these perceived fears, these illusionary fears, these phantom fears, and it gives us a whole different perception of reality that's not true. And I'll go in a little bit more in my next video.